Hi, I'm Phil Howard. I'm director of the Center for Media and Communication Studies. We're the hub of communication and media research in Eastern Europe. We specialize in studying a number of countries, uh, including Russia and Central Asia. We're a good community of about 10 researchers with expertise in, in authoritarian regimes, media control, and democratization. Social media has become very important for political life. It's the way young activists find each other and develop an agenda, and it's the way governments communicate with their citizens these days. It's very difficult to be in politics today without some kind of social media strategy. I think it's tough to peg a theory of democratic change to a particular technology. So I'll never talk about a Facebook revolution or a Twitter revolution. These tools themselves don't cause revolutions, but they're very important to having people figure out their shared grievances, and they're very important to having people figure out what to do about those grievances. So Facebook and Twitter don't cause democracies, uh, but they've become very important to what a healthy democracy looks like. Social media, even today, even after the Arab Spring, has turned out to be very important for organizing protests. And one of the interesting things these days about social media is that it's, it's become a way that activists can find each other, and it's also become a way that states can monitor activist activity. So uh, very recently, the Ukrainian government sent around a text message. They managed to geolocate all the activists who were uh, close to a protest and send them a text message saying very clearly that they were in a zone of protest and that they'd been marked by the government. Now not everybody who goes onto the street uh, is a democracy advocate. Often people just want to, to stand by their friends and family or they want some kind of regime change. Not everybody's an activist. But in those days of protest, uh, when a government can fall or last or crack down and, and has to make difficult choices about whether to shoot rubber bullets or tear gas into a crowd, social media has become an important part of the calculus, the uh, way of gathering information and the way of staying in touch with family or friends. I think we're at an interesting moment where for the last few years it's been mostly democracy advocates who've been using social media in very creative ways. And more recently we've seen governments figure out how to use big data for for governance, for running the country. Sometimes this is a good thing and sometimes this is a bad thing. So it's very important to understand which states are doing what with your private data. And there's some good examples of good public policy initiatives with big data. There's also some bad examples of tough regimes that use big data to surveil their publics. 